Hi guys. In one of my videos, I have already showed you some sample photos I took using an ND filter. But I guess some of you might still have questions about all the numbers on the filter, like what does the number mean? How many stops do you need? So in this video, I want to share with you some of the basic information about numbers on ND filters. But before I start, I just want to remind you, if you hate math, you might find this video a little boring. But I promise it really helps sorting out the numbers on the filter package. Let's start from the simple ones. One stop of light simply means an amount of light. So if you increase or decrease one stop, it means you double or cut the amount of light in half. We all know that when you are using a camera, there are three factors that decide how much light we let in. That is shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. So one stop ND would mean cutting half of the light. For shutter speed, it equals from 1 100th to 1 200th. And for ISO, it equals from 200 to 100. So just cut the numbers by half. As for aperture, it is more complicated. We can take a look at this table. I'm sure there is a calculation method behind it, but you can just memorize these numbers and you can see the f stop goes from 1, 1.4, 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, etc. So there is a one stop difference between each F number. All right, I hope you are not too bored by all these numbers. You might be wondering, why do I have to understand all these numbers? Well, it's because it can help you decide which stop you need. When you buy an ND filter, you might see the two to five stop or six to nine stop. This is just one way to express the amount of light. And the second way to express is 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, etc. This means how dark the glass is. And the third way to express is ND4, ND8, ND16, like this. This may look complicated, but just remember, each stop of exposure refers to half of light. So one stop equals ND2, two stops equals ND4, three stops equals ND8. Think of it this way, ND4 because when you multiply 2 by 2, you get 4. ND8 because when you multiply 2 by 2 for 3 times, you get 8. So it's 2 cubed. And ND16 is because when you multiply 2 by 2, for four times, you get 16. So take a look at the filter here. It says ND2 to 2000. Wow, 2000. It looks like a large number, right? But it simply means 11 stops. Because if you multiply 2 by 2 for 11 times, you get 2048. And the manufacturer just round it up to 2000. Okay, I hope it's clear enough. Now I'm going to show you how I can apply all these numbers to real life situations. So before I put an ND filter on my lens, I will just set my exposure, my ISO and shutter speed to exactly how I want it to be, despite looking too bright. And I will probably set the ISO to a lower number so that I can get the best quality. So now you can see my shutter speed is 1 200th f4 and ISO 200. I can not lower it because of the picture profile. So now um, obviously I am too bright and the meter here also tells me this is too bright as well. So remember I am at 1 200th 
Now, just to calculate, I'm going to change the shutter speed to now one four hundred. So this is one stop, and now one eight hundred. This is two stops, and now three stops. And here you can see the metering tells me this is the correct exposure. So. Um, remember we just counted three stops so this is the, the stops I need if I'm going to use an ND filter now let me give you a little quiz if your image is correctly exposed at 0.4 seconds but in order to create a very smooth water surface you would like to change the shutter speed to 30 seconds so how many stops of ND filter do you need you can pause the video to do some calculations. To get the answer, you should divide 30 by 0 0.4 and you get 75. And we know that 2 times 2 for 6 times equals 64. And 2 times 2 for 7 times equals 122. So 75 is in between, right? So the correct stop is somewhere between 6 and 7. Of course, if you don't have the exact stop of the filter at hand, you can always change the ISO, the aperture, or the shutter speed in order to fit the filter that you have. But I would suggest getting a variable ND filter because if you are new to filters, you might not be sure how many stops you need in what kind of situation. So you will have to do all kinds of calculations like I just did. With a variable ND filter, you can just turn the ring and experiment by yourself without having to change the filters all the time. So um, I know some people say the variable ND filters can create vignettes sometimes. I guess that's true for some cases but at least I don't notice anything with mine. So I think it's all right, especially when you are not using a super wide lens. And of course, you can do a lot more than just making things darker with an ND filter. There are a lot of creative ways to use an ND filter, but I'll just end the video here because I believe you have a lot to digest. I hope this video is helpful for you. Remember to check out the previous video I made about ND filters. The link is up there. So if you like my videos, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I'll see you next time.